Hi. Uh, sorry, I have uh, not been doing videos. I'm a little bit backed up. Uh, I don't mean to be. <laughs> um, I'm going to just like pop out a couple real quick. Um, okay, so where am I? I'm doing another one of these. Um, so yeah, I'm like out of practice. This is what happens. You get out of practice doing something like this and then you just can't do it. <laughs> um, I don't understand it either. Anyway, um, and I do have a request. I did see the request. I am thinking about it. Um, I'm definitely going to do it at some point. I, I've just been a lot of things going on. Um, I suppose I should do an update then too, huh? Um, at some point, but I'm going to do the, um, a couple of the book videos real quick and then, yeah, I should do a really long update video. Um, the next book I read and I lost track of numbers, you know, that would happen is, uh, no cure for being human and other truths I need to hear by Kate Bowler. I never heard of her before. Uh, this is a nonfiction, a memoir, um, about a terrible cancer diagnosis and, um, what she went through trying to, I mean, spoiler, she wrote the book, uh, trying to survive it, even though she was told, yeah, you're dying. And, um, exactly how much stress that she went through to actually, um, you know, find answers and find a solution that would help her to live. Um, so, okay, where's my list? Yes, I have lists. I live with lists. I made a video before about having bullet journals. Um, I think there's a couple of things, again, that it could be. I think what I will do is, if it's on here, if it's on here, uh, a book under 200 pages. Um, barely. If you don't include the, um, like appendixes where she's like, this is how you can get this information and stuff. Um, and the, you know, thanks to this person and that person and the other, uh, yeah, it's under 200 pages. So pretty short book. Um, it was very anxiety provoking to me. I mean, it, it was really, um, keep I'm just I just suddenly got like an idea to do this and I'm like okay just do it <laughs> um anyway um it, it did it did feel I I I I, I don't want to say because I feel like I'm I'm trivializing this terrible thing that this person went through it's the middle of the night you hear that of course anyway um but it did feel very, very similar to what I went through when I was trying to find out what was going on with me. I didn't seek a diagnosis. I had a terrible sort of crisis happen in my life. And um, it was suggested that I go to therapy or have some sort of, you know, see what's happening. And, uh, and I had been in therapy before, but... Um, I don't know, I, I guess I was masking or I had more pressing. Usually you don't go to therapy saying, hey, there's crisis. You go to therapy saying, hey, I've got this thing happening and and um, let's work on that. Um, so I guess before they never, even though I mean, serious red flags, they never thought to do a full evaluation. They just like were like, okay, we're dealing with this. So I finally got an evaluation and I'd never heard of avoidant personality disorder. Um, but then, so here's a label, smack it on you and find out what's going on. I had a terrible, I know people who've been back, if you keep reading back, I mean, the reason why I started making videos in the first place was um, I had such a horrible time trying to find information about what it was, what would work, what you could do to sort of improve things. Um, and, um, 
there was just so much misinformation. There were so many people that saw the word avoidant, didn't even read what it was, never got a diagnosis and said, oh, well, I avoid people because I must have this thing and I'm an expert about it because it's my life. So I'm going to talk about it. And there's still like people come up with new things and it's awful and everything else. Um, but not knowing what was going on, not, you know, being able to sort of get a straight answer. I mean, this is exactly what was going on in this book with this woman. Um, but hers was physical and painful as opposed to mental and painful. And, um, she did have a support system and that was complete opposite of my, um, experience, but Hey, I, I got through it just like this woman did. Um, so I thought it ended kind of abruptly as far as, geez, these videos have become me saying, here's some writing advice. What did I learn from this book? Uh, well, I learned that, you know, I've had people ask me and I, it sounds really egotistical. I've had people ask me if I, when am I going to write it in a memoir? Uh, this book makes it clear that I should not, <laughs> um, just because it, it would definitely re-traumatize. It was traumatic reading this. Uh, that's harsh. That's extreme. That's again, trivializing. But it was, I mean, it was triggering. Okay, let's call it triggering rather than traumatizing. Um, even though that's another word that's like, yuck. Um, I mean, it was pretty, it was gnarly to read it. So to go through my own experience and write down, I mean, I don't know about you, but just having little snippets of memories. Um, you know, first of all, you start ruminating again. And then second of all, it's just, it's causes a downward spiral and it's gross and nobody wants that in their life. And, um, I don't think that people with avoidant personality disorder are sort of like good candidates for it. Plus, do you really want to put yourself out there like that? Do you really, I mean, I say a lot of things that's going on in my life, but generally I'm speaking to the choir or people that at least think they would be getting this diagnosis if they don't straight up have it. It's people with a clue. And you send out a memoir, anybody everywhere could read it. Um, which actually, both myself and another person I know, independently, we found out afterward, we were talking about it and we were absolutely horrified. Both had therapists suggest to us that we do like a reality TV show where they have the, I mean, this is ego of therapists. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with you? Where they would have a camera crew follow us. I mean, these were individuals, so these wouldn't be like two of us, but just one person, one of us, me around in my real life, filming me and then also filming the therapist as they live their life and then go and film the therapy sessions in order to teach people about avoiding personality disorder oh my god no 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 um i think writing a memoir would be exactly the same i think that it would be putting myself out there not for the people who i'm actually interested in in speaking to and, and educating which is the people who are watching these videos who have it or know somebody who has it or is trying to see if they have it and um you know, get some actual real information because it's so hard to find out there. And, you know, you, there's a lot of videos made by, you know, therapists and psychiatrists and all this who are just trying to have a channel that talks about everything. And they don't really have that much experience. They don't have any personal experience, obviously. And they are like, you know, so they've got to put up a video about everything in the DSM. Not going to find out any real information. Um, and, um, from those videos and, and I don't think that, I don't think there's a, hopefully, I don't know, possibly, but I sincerely hope for the rest of the world that there isn't a big enough audience for that book. And I don't want to have people who are callous 
and I'm like uncaring and just seeing it as sort of like sensationalists that would be reading this book. I mean, and, and again, you've got to have something really bad happen to you for, um, for you to actually get a uh, autobiography generally out there. And so, um, yeah, I guess that's what I would say, you know, that, that reading books like this that are so completely, utterly different from what you may be writing or you may be interested in, again, it clarifies, um, what, um, you should or should not be doing with your own work, you know, and you never know, you might find something brilliant. Like, I don't really like, um, like true crime or even like crime books. I don't really like, you know, murder mysteries and all that. Like, I mean, there's like thrillers can be sort of psychological, but the ones where they're like really graphic, not interested in it's a general rule but um who is it i think it's michael connelly he used to be a um beat reporter in la and covered um the police you know and crime and all that stuff his books are fantastic i would never read anything like that except that i was trying to write something like that didn't turn out to be like that really i mean again it put me in the direction i need to be in by showing me i did not need to be going in this direction but i mean i think i've read i don't know 80 percent of his books i think they're great um and um i wouldn't have ever like ever come across it if i hadn't been trying to expand my uh writing um and you know just push my knowledge of, of what kind of writing is out there um which is kind of where I put this book um would I recommend it to other people I mean you want a tearjerker I mean I didn't cry over it but I was like concerned I actually did have to keep saying okay this is the author who wrote this book it was not written about her she wrote it herself she lived through it you know it's bad it's really bad but she lived through it um if you're interested in something like that, I mean, it was well written and again, it's short. And so she's not drawing out and, uh, making you suffer. Cat. Um, while you learn her fate. Anyway, so it was, it was pretty good. It was well written.